Hi, and welcome to our program from Embryo to Chick. My name is Jeanette Berenger, and I'm the Senior Program Manager for the Livestock Conservancy, a national nonprofit dedicated to the conservation of rare livestock and poultry breeds. Today's topic is Pick a Chick, where we will explore the different types of chickens to choose from, the differences between egg layers and meat birds, how adaptation to climate is important, and the differences between heritage breeds and hybrid chickens. We will finish off with a showcase of breeds so you can see the wonderful diversity of breeds to choose from. So let's get started. The first thing you want to ask yourself is why do you want chickens in the first place? This is going to set you up for some decision making on what kind of breeds you're going to get. And you want to ask yourself, is it just for eggs, for meat, maybe a little bit of both? Is it pest control? Maybe you want to have some help with bugs around the garden. Or simply have them as pets because they can, after all, be quite pleasant to spend time with if you've got the right chicken. No matter what the reason, though, chickens do need commitment. And so if you're going to jump into having them, realize that they are going to live about an average of seven years or, or sometimes a lot longer and that they are going to need daily care and attention and uh, protection from predators. And it's no small commitment, so just be prepared for it. All chickens lay eggs, but some breeds do it better than others. And you can tell a lot by a breed by its body type. The animal on the left here, the leghorn, this is a breed that produces a lot of eggs and is one of the top layers in the chicken community. And then you have the Plymouth Rock, which is more of a meat chicken. And yes, the breed does lay eggs, but as you can see, they're very, very meaty. Egg production and meat production is kind of like a balance. Uh, the better a meat bird is, the fewer eggs it's going to lay. Um, the more eggs that a bird lays, then it's not going to have as much meat as uh, a meat bird would. So if you're expecting to get a lot of meat out of an animal that also produces a lot of eggs, um, that's typically not what's going to happen. In between your egg layers and your meat birds, you have the dual purpose bird. And these are some of the more common breeds that people choose for the backyards because they give you a little bit of everything. They might not have as much meat as a purely meat bird or as much eggs as a high production bird, but they fall somewhere comfortably in the middle. And that's actually quite perfect for a backyard flock. Another question you want to ask yourself is, do you want to go with a heritage breed or a hybrid chicken? The birds on the left here, for instance, they can get to market weight by 8 to 10 weeks of age, which is very, very fast. The ones on the right are a combination of the commercial type birds on the left with a heritage breed. And they still grow very fast, but they're going to reach their weight at closer to 12 weeks of age. So if you're in a hurry and you want to produce a bunch of meat birds in a short period of time, hybrid meat chickens might be the way that you want to go. Like the meat chickens, you also have some hybrid varieties that specialize in egg laying and there's quite a variety to choose from. You have your high volume commercial birds, which typically are going to lay probably more eggs than a family needs. These birds can lay well over 300 eggs in a year's time, and if you have even a small flock, that's a lot of eggs. So a better option might be some of the hybrid uh, crosses that were made by putting in a little bit of heritage breed. And these birds look a little bit different. They come in all different kind of colors. They're going to mature a little bit more slowly than the commercial birds, but they're still going to lay a lot of eggs in a short period of time. And then you also have options of different colors, for instance, with the Easter eggers that are on the right hand side here. These birds lay blue and green eggs and are a beautiful addition to the egg basket, especially if you really like seeing multicolored eggs. A lot of people will mix up the breeds and get some white egg layers and some brown and some blue egg layers, and it makes for a really pretty egg carton. The big thing that people forget about these birds, though, is even though they lay a lot of eggs in a short period of time, by the time they get to be around three or four years old, their career as a high volume egg layer is starting to deteriorate. 
And so you have to ask yourself, maybe you're one of those people that, oh, just wants eggs, you know, chickens for eggs and that, um, you know, I could never eat my chickens. Well, what are you going to do when the chickens stop laying eggs? Are you willing to have a coop full of pets? Ask yourself that carefully because sometimes they can live a long time. I have one pet chicken in our flock and we have about 60 birds and that one pet chicken she's 14 years old so if you're taking good care of your chickens they may be around a long time that said these birds make excellent stew hens and very flavorful meat can be had from them but if you can't process them on your own you're going to have to figure out who's going to do that and uh, go from there so Think carefully before you say, oh, I just want chickens just for eggs. Finally, let's start talking about heritage breeds, which of course is some of my favorite breeds. And uh, they're really interesting to get into. Uh, if you're looking for a project that has a little more meaning beyond raising food for your family, these animals represent diversity for agriculture that's irreplaceable and uh, if you're looking for something that's got conservation value these are the animals that you're going to want to think about. Each one has a history and a story behind them. You have the feveral that's in the upper right and this is a bird that was developed in Normandy and the French love pretty chickens but they also were really practical when it came to this breed and they're actually excellent foragers and they are very uh, robust and um, make uh, good meat birds but also lay a decent amount of eggs uh, so each one of the breeds has a story behind it and typically they're pretty robust animals Many still have the ability to raise their own young, not all of them. There are some breeds that were developed as non-setters, meaning that they weren't typically going to go broody. Uh, the one thing they do all have in common is they're typically slower to grow, and we found that that slow growth equals flavor. And so if you're looking for a wonderful table bird, these heritage breeds are going to re represent flavors and experiences that you won't find in the stuff that you're going to find on the shelves at the supermarket. Now that we've talked about all the different choices you have as far as breeds of chickens, let's delve a little bit deeper into what kind of chickens are going to work for you. And a good thing to look at is their headgear. And uh, this all comes into play for climate considerations. Do you live in a warm climate? Do you live in a cold climate? The birds on the top, for instance, have these ornate combs and big wattles, and those are meant to radiate heat. These breeds are from hot places, and they use these combs and wattles to be able to cool off. As opposed to the birds on the bottom, you can see they've got combs and wattles very close to their heads, not a lot of surface exposed to the air, so they're not going to be pro as prone to frostbite as the birds on the top are. However, put those birds in a hot climate, they're going to have a harder time cooling off. And so ask yourself, you know, is the bird you're picking out going to be able to handle your climate? It's not to say that these birds can't live in a hot or cold climate. It's just now you've got to give them extra support so that they're going to stay healthy. For instance, the uh, heat loving breeds, you're going to have to have a warm barn. And that means you're going to have to think about heating that barn, although they're not going to need it hot in there, you know, just above freezing. But if you want to make sure these birds aren't going to get frostbitten, you're going to have to think of how to keep them warm enough so that doesn't happen. Same thing can be said for the birds below. They're going to have a hard time uh, staying cool in the summertime and so are you going to want to set up fans in the barn to keep them cool? So just a little more food for thought when choosing a breed. You also want to be thinking about how big are these birds going to get. You want to make sure that when you're choosing a breed that the size is going to fit appropriately in the space that you have available. If you've got a small backyard and not a lot of space but really want to have some chickens for eggs, then maybe a bantam breed would be the way to go. Obviously they're not going to be a great choice for meat, but they can be decent little egg layers and certainly are plenty of fun to keep around. 
Also, going back to our discussion about climate and adaptations to different climates, some of the really big-bodied birds aren't going to do really well in extreme hot climates because they're going to have a hard time radiating the heat. So you might think about a smaller-bodied bird. Uh, same thing goes with the small birds. They might need a little extra attention in really cold climates because they're so small they're going to have a hard time retaining that heat. So just some more things to consider when you're looking at the breeds. You also want to be looking at temperament. There are breeds out there that certainly have the reputation for being high strung or sometimes aggressive. And that might be great if you've got a lot of predators around and you want an animal that's going to be paying attention all the time. And then you have others that are going to be really laid back, easy going, and maybe thinking more about food than predators being around. And if you've got them well protected in a pen, then that might be a good choice for you too. Lastly, do you want just hens, or is it okay if you get some males in the mix? Sometimes if you pay a little bit more, you can get sexed chicks, meaning that they've already been sexed before they are purchased, and so you can be sure that you're getting a bunch of pullets or, uh, you know, young females. Or you can get what's called a straight run, and that is basically left up to luck as to how many hens or roosters that you're eventually going to end up with. So it's up to you. If you happen to be in an urban environment, maybe you need to have them sex because the neighbors aren't going to appreciate a lot of roosters around. If you buy a straight run and you're dying to know how many males and females you get, by the time they're about eight weeks of age, you can pretty much tell the males from the females. Some of the breeds are a little trickier than others, but the one thing that's certain with all breeds, if you take a look at their saddle feathers, and the saddle is where this arrow is pointing, if they're rounded on the top, that means they're going to be female. And if they're longer and pointier, then they're definitely males. And that's a really, really easy way to tell males from females in young birds. I'm sure you're now asking yourself, how much are these birds going to cost me? This is going to be very dependent on the type of bird. Is it a common hybrid or is it a rare breed? Do you want show quality or just a backyard quality chicken? Are you getting day-old chicks or older birds? If a farmer has to grow the birds to an older age, you have to pay more because it costs more for food and upkeep to get them to an older age. Many times hatcheries run sales at the end of the season, so pricing could be lower, but you may not get exactly what you want. It's all up to you. Now let's sit back and see a few of the amazing breeds that are out there for you to choose from.
For more information on other programs with the Livestock Conservancy and North Carolina Cooperative Extension, please visit our websites. The Livestock Conservancy is a nonprofit that has been saving rare and endangered breeds for more than 43 years. Our small staff and large network of volunteer breeders stretches throughout America to identify and protect more than 150 breeds of livestock and poultry, and you can help. Become a member of the Conservancy today and help make sure these irreplaceable genetic treasures are available for tomorrow's food and fiber system. Thank you for joining us today and have a great day. Here's hoping the chicken projects you dream of come true.